Thank you for joining me today. Really happy to share the digital sales formula with you guys in this training. The secrets to scaling e-commerce profitably. These are hacks, tips, strategies, whatever you want to call them. It's, it's the right way to scale uh, e-commerce sales profitably. Stuff that I've learned from the last four years of, of training and, and testing with clients and spending hundreds of thousands of dollars in ads and generating millions and millions in sales for clients. So I know that these concepts work and I know that these secrets work and I know that they'll really have a big impact on your business. So let's dive right in. So today we're gonna to cover three main secrets. Number one, uh, e-commerce is math. And I'll, I'll dive more into that more specifically. Number two, the formula for maximizing ad spend and the e-commerce calculator. If you guys stick around to the end, I actually have a, a spreadsheet to share with you guys that'll make us, this is one of the um, really core concepts that you guys, uh, I really wanna share with you and how it works. And then number three, secret number three, how to achieve long-term success um, with the value ladder. So I'm not gonna bore you too much, but just a little background about me, uh, in case you don't know who I am. Uh, Self-taught digital marketer. Uh, I was a marketing manager of a two plus million dollar company by age 22, coming out of college. Uh, director of sales and marketing by 26. And I sold 1.2 million in sales by 26 as the director of sales and marketing with a sales team and a, mar a marketing team working underneath me while doing all of the marketing uh, in the golf industry and helped lead that company to 4.7 million. And then I was like, let's, I know that I'm capable of so much more. And, and that's when I really embarked on my entrepreneurial and, and freelance journey. Um, and so, you know, this year I, I have decided to take things even to another level just so that you guys know where I'm coming from, that I'm not just blowing smoke up your butt. I've spent more than $40,000 this year alone on training for myself and my team. I've generated more than $3 million in e-commerce sales in the last 18 months for clients. I've spent more than $400,000 in ads in the last two years. And I've spent more than $10,000 alone in, in ads just testing some of my own products and funnels in the last three to four months. I've got 10 years experience as a digital marketer. I live and breathe this stuff and I consume an absorbent amount of content. So I'm really excited to share this stuff with you guys today and let's dive right in, start with secret number one and really get things going. So uh, also too, I love to fish and play golf. So if any of you out there love to fish and play golf, uh, give me a shout. I'll share some of my good secret fishing spots here with you guys in Orlando. Uh, you might even catch me out on the golf course uh, at some point. So, so let's start with secret number one. This whole concept about e-commerce is math. So many times when I've been consulting with uh, e-commerce entrepreneurs and business owners and even marketers in the e-commerce space, one of my biggest pain points with helping them is kind of helping them to understand um, how marketing is really uh, a data play and a data game it's really understanding uh, the benchmarks and, and drop off rates and, and what a good conversion rate is because overall you're driving a lot of people into the top of, of your funnel, right? And what that means is that you've got to market to a lot of people in order to get a less amount of people basically taking actions, right? And so uh, the e-commerce ecosystem, what I like to call it, is really made up of like three really main parts. You've got your sales funnel or essentially your website, depending on how you're running your strategy, whether it's through something like ClickFunnels, which I use uh, really often because I can control the conversion rates better and can control the user experience more efficiently and effectively. Um, then you've got your ads, so whether it's Google ads, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, and then you've got your email campaigns, right? And so there's multiple different types of traffic and emails and, and Facebook ads and Instagram ads and Google ads would fall into those buckets, right? So when we talk about, you know, overall, you're, you're basically bringing people to your business, right? You are driving traffic in some form or fashion, uh, branding, uh, bringing brand awareness to your product and really crafting your sales message in a way that gets people to take action, right? And so that's what we talk about when, as e-commerce marketers, uh, of driving traffic to the top of your funnel. So 
Um, starting right here on the left, you know, we're talking about this concept of setting goals with your funnel. Um, and basically, when you market to the masses, you've really got to understand the key benchmarks of, of how a funnel will convert in order for this formula to ultimately make sense for you uh, as a business owner to be able to generate profitable revenue, right? And so uh, when you go through your testing process, whether you're DIYing your product launch or whether you're working with an agency or you know, uh, some sort of marketing team, it's really important for you as the e-commerce entrepreneur to understand how things should be graded um, and how the process kind of flows around those key benchmarks, right? So when we talk about sales pages, a sales page would basically be like your product detail page, which is where your product is featured. So um, with that sales page, you're really looking to hit a 3% conversion rate. So if you're marketing to uh, 100 people, or at first, uh, let me back up, if you have 100 people coming to your sales page, you really need three people to buy in order to say, to mark that off your checklist and say, okay, I'm doing something right here with my sales page. I have a great offer. My sales message is accurate. I can check that off as being um, not an obstacle to this process, right? And so then one of the biggest parts that so many people miss is they fall so much in love with their product that they forget so many core sales principles of upselling and generating further profit with post-purchase upsells and cross-selling different products or additional products to their customer at the same time. Because guys, here's a fact. Ads are expensive and customer acquisition is expensive, right? And so when you're selling a solo product, you either have to have a product that you know, is $100 or more so that when you have to spend 30 bucks to acquire that customer, you can actually make some money. So the other way around that is uh, building the sales funnel where you've got order bumps and upsells in the process that help you generate additional revenue uh, with your sales so that your return on ad spend is more profitable, right? Uh, this is such a huge step that so many people miss. They try and sell their product, they spend thousands of dollars in ads, and then they wonder why they can't generate money. Well, if your product is 20, 30, even 40 bucks, and it's costing you 20, 30, 40 bucks to get someone to buy that by running a Facebook ad, you're never gonna make money, right? Um, and so, it's really understanding these core concepts of, of how the numbers game really impacts the whole system, right? So, um, for example, with order bumps, which is basically a pre-purchase um, order bump, such as, you know, if you're selling a vitamin, you could sell a second vitamin before they complete their purchase in order to increase that order value. That, or, that, that process and that sales uh, implementation right away impacts your return on ad spend. So that can very easily take you from a one to one scenario to even a two to one scenario or even a one and a half to one scenario. And it really makes your return on ad spend uh, more efficient right away with not even changing any of your targeting or any of your ad copy or, or any of your ad creative. And so then when we talk about upsells as well, uh, an upsell would be basically post purchase. So again, if somebody bought that vitamin, position of vitamin to them again after that, that purchase, uh, again, to increase the cart value and uh, instantly uh, make your return on ad spend more efficient. So I would highly encourage you guys to really understand these metrics of, so that that way when you're testing your ads and you're testing your website, your sales funnel, um, and things of that nature, you know what you're up against. You know what metrics you're up against, right? And so, so many times something that I find um, is that people, uh, there's a, a misconception that ads drive conversion. Well, the, the goal of an ad is really to sell someone on a click, right? Uh, the, the ad is to, to kind of begin the persuasion process of moving someone from an ad platform over to your sales page, right? And so when we talk about uh, specific metrics for ads, we're really looking for a 1% to 3% click-through rate in order to uh, basically say, hey, okay, again, let's mark that off our checklist. We're doing something really good here. We must have a good, strong sales message that is resonating with our audience, right? 
And so when you're, when you're running, for example, conversion ads on Facebook, you really want to be shooting for that at least 2% click through rate and video always drives that high click through rate in comparison to static images, especially on the Facebook ad platform. Um, and automatically just think of it guys. Like if you're getting a 2% click through rate versus a 1% click through rate, you're literally spending the same amount of money for the same and doubling your traffic, right? So wouldn't you rather spend the same thousand dollars and get 2000 people to your sales page versus 1000 people to your sales page, right? So really important to understand these metrics. And then with remarketing ads, you know, typically this is an individual that we would call uh, a warm audience. You know, they've been more educated on your brand, on your product, et cetera. So they're not as much of a cold prospect, right? So remarketing ads are really going to uh, generate and should generate a much higher click-through rate. And you really should be targeting that 3% plus um, target mark because again, you're driving a very efficient, um, a very efficient click-through to your sales page in order to ultimately um, get someone to, to buy, right? Um, and then on the email side, I love email. Uh, it's basically free traffic, right? So you wanna be maximizing the capability of your list. And we'll talk about email more like in future trainings and things like that. But just wanted to share some of these metrics with you guys right here so that you could, you could start to, to understand like, is my ad the obstacle here in this whole system? Um, is my funnel, my sales page, the obstacle here in my system? Where do I need to make tweaks and changes in order for this process to really work for me, right? So now we're gonna skip through to secret number two. So this is where we're gonna kind of go off the presentation a little bit, and we're gonna dig into this e-commerce calculator. So this is taking it one step further of understanding the uh, e-commerce formula. And I want to show you guys how quickly, when you understand this formula, how quickly it can impact your return on ad spend, right? So I'm going to jump over here to the spreadsheet and we're going to work this example off of, uh, you know, let's say that you had a $500,000 sales target, right? So you can see this $500,000 sales target and that's what this whole uh, example is based off of. So, um, you know, I'm just going to operate on some um, like, um, examples here to kind of give you an idea on how this process works. So let's say that your product costs $50. Um, so if your product costs $50 and you wanted to generate a, a half a million dollars in sales, you would have to generate um, 10,000 orders uh, in order to make that happen, right? So $50 times 10,000, that's how you get to 500,000 in sales. So this is where the, the benchmarks and the industry benchmarks really come into play. So within e-commerce, um, most, most, and I say most, so this isn't, this isn't a blanket statement, uh, you know, most e-commerce websites will typically convert around 2% uh, without a bunch of optimization, uh, improvement of creative, um, and additional sales copy, videos that really demonstrate the product, et cetera. Most e-commerce websites will typically convert at about 2%. So that's what this number is here. And then, like we said before in that previous example, um, you know, if we're getting a 2% click-through rate um, on your ads, um, you know at this case, like, okay, I'm, I'm checking off like uh, a pretty reasonable, um, um, a pretty reasonable expectation for what my ads should be doing, right? And so what this formula does is, is it shows you how much you would actually have to spend in advertising in order to generate $500,000. So if we had a 2% conversion rate on the website, a 2% click-through rate on, on the ad level, now the big uh, variable here is your cost per click. So if this cost per click doubles from 50 cents, to a dollar, you know, it really impacts the system right away, right? So you can see that it's actually gonna require um, $500,000 in ad spend rather in order to hit this target. So, but then again, if we change it back to 50 cents, here, let me change it back to 50 cents. You can see how that return on ad spend goes back to two to one and your cost per sale or your CPA is $25, right? So this is where, high level marketing strategy really starts to impact the system. 
so many e-commerce entrepreneurs don't understand this, right? They're, they have these lofty goals, these lofty sales goals, and this is where the e-commerce math formula, which I call the e-commerce growth formula, really impacts the entire system, right? Like, it's so much more than about the cost of the product. It's so much more than the, the capability of your ads. It's really understanding the numbers. So I want to show you guys just one little simple tweak, uh, which would really be more of a strategy tweak than it would be a sales message tweak, um, a, a targeting uh, tweak, or even a, a ad platform tweak. So if you just simply bump the average revenue or the average cart value of your sale from $50 to $75 with the same $500,000 target, the same conversion rate on the website, the same conversion rate, or if you will, click through rate through ads with the same uh, cost per click, you would actually spend you know, roughly $85,000 less or $95,000 less in, in ad spend and generate three to $3 for every $1 that you spend. So instantly, just by increasing your order value, remember we talked about upsells, order bumps, things like that. So if you can get your cart value to $75, you're automatically instantly more profitable because your CPA remained the same and all you did was implement strategy that increased your cart value, right? I can't underestimate enough how important this is. It's one of the most fundamental elements um, and important elements to you guys generating more profit from your e-commerce strategy, right? So I wanna show you one more tweak. Right, so let's say that you start optimizing your website, your sales page, your funnel and click funnels, however you're launching your product. Um, personally, uh, I really like to drive my traffic through a sales page because I can often get these conversion rates much higher than 3% because I can have more, um, more uh, capability to test sales messages, to test offers, test the hierarchy of my sales page. So. Um, just to see the, you know, this, this change here from 2% to 3%, we're instantly now at four and a half to one, and we've kept the cart value at $75. We've made optimizations to the sales page by, again, it's by creative, it's by sales message, it's by, you know, maybe adding video that demonstrates and highlights the product more effectively, right? Automatically, same targeting, same ad, same sales message. Um, same system, we're automatically more profitable because we've optimized the sales uh, process and we've increased the order value, right? So you guys can see right away how, how important it is to understand this formula, right? And, and I hope that you really can understand it. I hope that I'm explaining it in a way that, that it makes sense and it doesn't seem super complicated. And I'm actually going to share this spreadsheet with you guys. So, so don't worry, you know, if you're, you're trying to make notes and and scramble to you know recreate the formula or anything like that. So, and uh, just wanted to kind of give you one more example where let's say that you you come up with a fire ad, right? Like you've got the perfect ad and it's killing it. You've got a four percent click through rate um, on your video ad. You know, automatically right away, same system, same ad, same targeting, same seventy five dollar value, uh, up the the conversion rate on the sales page to five percent you know, now you're at seven and a half to one, right? This is all strategy. This is, this is all strategy in terms of, of focusing on sales process and not focusing on your product, right? So like, trust me guys, like I love your products. Um, I love working with entrepreneurs who are super passionate about their product, but it's, it's that it's being able to take this formula and match it with your product to be able to create a system that helps you make money, right? That's what this is all about. So uh, that's the e-commerce calculator uh, as part of the e-commerce growth formula. And so I've got one more secret, secret number three that I wanna share with you guys. This is the secret to achieve long-term success. This is a concept that you've heard Russell Brunson talk about in tremendous length. It's a, it's a concept that is really fundamental to business um, that when you, when you migrate it over to e-commerce gives you massive lifetime capability with driving sales with your customers, right? So basically the uh, value ladder is really broken into, you know, a couple of, of core concepts. You know, you've got basically the ability to 
bring a customer into a low risk entry point, you know, whether it's by, you know, selling them uh, a low risk offer, maybe it's uh, also a lead generation strategy by giveaways or eBooks or things of that nature that gets them engaging with your brand. This is very much going that route is very much a long term uh, brand building list building strategy, right? And remember guys, the value, the, the absolute most important value within your company is your list, right? If you ever hope to get acquired, if you ever hope for another company to buy your company one day, they're buying you because of your list. They're buying you because of the audience that you've created and that you've established over the years of your company and your product, right? So, you know, the, 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 so the concept here is that with the value ladders, you want to escalate people through different levels in your business, right? So you bring them on, you sell them on one product, and it's always more costly to sell that person the first time than it is to sell them the second time and the third time and the fourth time, right? And so what's really important to understand about that is, is that your lifetime value increases as well as your return on ad spend, right? So lifetime value is all about acquiring someone the first time and then what is the collection or the total value of sales that I've sold them on? So again, if you've uh, sold them first on a $50 product and then you know six months later, you sell them on your $100 product and then you know six months later, you sell them on a $200 product. Now you've had 200 plus 100 plus 50, that's $350 of total value and even if you did, it did cost you 50 bucks to acquire that customer, you're four to one, right? And the best part about that is, is when we talked about email, is you've got such a huge opportunity to sell them on those second and third purchases through email, right? And so I really want you guys focused on long-term success, right? Because um, there's so many metrics and data points and things like that out there about small businesses that fail within the first you know, 12, 24 months because they're not able to create a sustainable system. And, and this is really that key to that system is selling the customer that's already buying from you. You want to escalate them in your loyalty, continue to value them and escalate them into other products. Even if those products are the same cost, that $50 cost, you're elevating them and keeping them within the family and you're generating more profit on every sale, on every sale, on every sale, right? So, you know, in the future, depending on your product or service, you can sell them more higher ticket um, items, right? And so if you've got that thousand dollar product or several thousand dollar product, it's much easier to sell that person or sell that product to a person who's already bought from you before. And so, um, you know, really important for you guys to, to embrace this concept of the value ladder um, and really see how you can implement it into your business because just selling product number one is not the end of this game, right? Like if you truly are, um, you know, driving this for the long term, you've got the ability to sell to them again, again, and again, and again. And that's ultimately how you guys are going to kill it, right? So I just want to skip to uh, a couple, a special, you know, bonus, if you will, you know, um, and so like what uh, so many times people ask me, what is it going to take to drive sales, right? And so, so many people see the tip of the iceberg. We all see the case studies, you know, the people who are killing it, um, this and that, you know, uh, we've seen clients kill it too. Like I've seen people generate millions in sales running these strategies. And so like, I really want to encourage you, um, you know, to, that's why we're doing this training, right? It's about what's actually happening behind the scenes, understanding this formula, understanding these core concepts, because we all want the shiny thing, right? We all want the profit. We all want the sales, you know, the big sales numbers and everything, but it's understanding the system and how you can put this system and this process into place so that it works for you and it works for you to generate sales and it works for you to drive revenue and it works for you to generate profit. That's what this is all about, right? So I really want you guys to embrace this aspect of, acquisition into monetization. So two phases, right? This is where the, the aspect of the value ladder comes into play is that it's going to be super expensive for you guys to acquire customers in the beginning, whether you're running Facebook ads, Google ads, etc. And over time, the, the profit margin widens, right? Because that's when you're selling your second and third product 
to that pre-existing customer, or maybe you're selling the same product over and over and over again to them because it's a disposable product, right? Maybe it's, you know, a liquid vitamin, a supplement, um, uh, you know, a skin cream, you know, something like that, right? Where they buy it month after month after month after month. Um, and then your, your, your lifetime value opportunity is just massive, right? And so, so many times uh, we get so focused on driving profit on the first touch point, um, which is possible, um, but it's only possible if you implement this formula because there's one key thing that we talked about today, right? It's increasing that order value so that it really drives up um, the cart value while you're trying to test and acquire customers. So, um, you know, that long-term formula for success is acquiring customers, increasing the order value and increasing the frequency of purchase from your customers. So, um, and guys, remember it's with that, people buy from people they trust, right? So once you earn that trust, do everything you can to earn that trust, whether it's providing amazing customer service on the back end, whether it's making sure that you're, you're actually delivering a credible product to people, you know, people buy from people they trust. So um, I want to thank you guys for joining me today. Um, you know, stick around, comment to me on Facebook, on Instagram, so that you guys can get this uh, e-commerce calculator. I want to share it with you. Um, I've also got other cheat sheets and checklists and things like that. Um, email automation outlines and uh, conversion metrics. So you guys can see, you know, how to judge this sales process for e-commerce and really get the numbers to work for you. So I want to thank you again. Thank you for sticking around. I've got so much more uh, coming your way in the next couple days and weeks and months. So stick with me, shoot me your questions, email me. Uh, would love to hear from you and I'll catch you really soon.